Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to Panzer Corps, a series that I've been live streaming now for three or four consecutive days. Uh, it's amongst the longest consecutive days where I've streamed every single day. And uh, we're returning to Panzer Corps. We have won the Battle of Poland decisively. We won the Battle of Norway decisively. We won marginal victories in the two scenarios in France, so we missed out on our opportunity to invade Britain. We then went to the Balkans, where we won a marginal victory against Yugoslavia and Greece. And in our last battle, we fought the invasion of Barbarossa, the invasion of Russia. And while we were successful, as you can see here, the report on the screen says, Adequate work, General. Um, you know, we drove the enemy to Smolensk. We successfully took Smolensk. But we did so with only a couple of turns to spare, and so it was deemed a marginal victory, which in essence repeats history from the German perspective. A tremendous feat of martial arms, and yet, on the flip side, it is not enough to ensure an immediate drive on Moscow. Instead, we're looking now at the Kiev pocket, that historical pocket of over a half a million Soviet troops that were cut off in the Ukraine uh, by German forces, and rather than continue the drive on Moscow, the Germans felt the need to turn and safeguard their rear by reducing this pocket. It took valuable time, which then in turn left them less time to drive on Moscow and gave the Soviets more time to prepare the defenses of Moscow. The flip side of that is it's easy hindsight to say, well, if they just kept going, but their logistical train was so, so stretched by the vast distances which they had uh, co covered. And again, they had numerous holes in their rear. If they hadn't turned back to solidify those fronts, it's very possible the enemy could have punched through their flank. It's possible they wouldn't have even had the supplies or the fuel to continue the push. You know, the German army by this point was exhausted and needed a bit of a breather. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in, and uh, we'll hear the little bit of a briefing. How glorious our charge to Moscow would have been. But sometimes caution is the order of the day. Such an enormous concentration of enemy forces could threaten our advance and our reputations. To effectively subdue this substantial pocket of resistance, you will need to cut off Kiev completely by encircling it. Elements of Army Group South have already besieged Kiev itself, but will undoubtedly require your aid to secure such a major city. Only part of your core forces is available for this operation. The remainder must hold the line against a possible Soviet counterattack. We estimate that you have approximately one month to successfully achieve all of your objectives. Any longer, and we risk units within the pocket breaking out to link up with the Soviet reinforcements that are certainly approaching from the Far East. Should you succeed in your objective quickly enough, there may still be time to strike at Moscow this year. All right. Um, I turned the volume up there a bit, so hopefully you could hear that briefing. Uh, hello, Elena. Um... Today we are uh, going to be fighting the Battle of Kiev, as the briefing there says. A decisive victory must be won with nine turns remaining. A marginal victory just needs to be won. So again, we've got 14 turns to win a decisive victory in this battle. That seems like not a lot. I mean, that's a rapid drive through enemy territory, overcoming stiff resistance likely along the way. If we return to this map, we'll see essentially our deployment area for our forces is up north here. And our objectives are all located along one narrow line. Essentially, we just have to drive south along this road, and then we'll accomplish all of our objectives. The only objective that isn't along that straight line that we need to take is here to the west, and that is in Kiev itself. These two uh, hexes represent the city of Kiev. You can see here that the Soviets are actually dug in in these entrenchments around the city, and we have quite substantial army forces from Army Group South uh, to aid in the reduction of Kiev. Actually, quite a bit. Uh, almost more troops than I think we'll have to play with uh, with our own force. It says you're only allowed to bring part of your army, but I think that just shows how we haven't been able to build up an adequate core force yet because of the fact that we keep taking casualties. So we have a thousand prestige to play with, but we've got to replace some of our losses from the last battle. And again, we've only got 18 units to pick from. Uh, and, you know, we can, we can pick 18 for this battle. So we've got the perfect size force, 
maybe not the perfect composition. So I'm going to go through here and just pick elite reinforcements for all of these. That is my perhaps cardinal sin as a player as I rely too heavily on elite reinforcements uh, to keep the quality of our troops up. Uh, that does have some negative uh, side effects, however, in that it doesn't leave you a ton of uh, money to you know increase the size of your force. But we're just going to go across the line and do that, and you can see here that leaves us with about 300 prestige left, not a ton. We could overstrength some of these units as well. I'm not entirely clear what value that does. It gives you more hit points, sure, but I don't know if it actually makes you harder to kill other than the fact that you just get one extra point. Like, do you get a manpower advantage if it's an 11 versus a 10? I'm not sure how that works. Uh, with the 300 prestige we have left, not a ton of options that we can, you know, pursue. Um, but I'm just kind of looking through here. I don't know if I want more artillery. Uh, maybe another Stuka. I think that would actually be useful. So we're going to go ahead and buy another Stuka dive bomber uh, with that money. So again, we can only deploy 18 of these units. We'll probably leave one of the infantry units out as just sort of a reserve that we can call in if we take casualties. And we'll go ahead and deploy our air forces right away. So we've got the two BF-109 fighter units, the two Stukas, and then uh, we've got some troops that are going to advance south along this main road. Now there are some rivers and natural obstacles, so I do think we want to make sure that we have our bridging unit. I'm kind of tempted to take two approaches, to try and take two roads. I don't know if that will dilute the strength of our assault, but I wonder if it'll allow you to go quicker. I, I'm hoping maybe these western cities are less well guarded and maybe we can use a flanking maneuver to, to move more quickly. I worry you kind of get stuck in a you know in an Arnhem situation where you try and advance everything down one narrow road, especially when there's some of these natural obstacles along the flanks. Because of that, however, I am going to go ahead and deploy our bridging unit here, kind of on the right flank. Hopefully we can get across this river here easily and maybe flank uh, some of these roads. There's some open fields. It's just a matter of getting through these rivers. So I think we'll go ahead and we'll deploy this uh, bridging unit on our right. Uh, we'll kind of put it over this river here and it will create a de facto bridge that lets our troops move up and around. We only have two armored units here, so that may be uh, a bit difficult to deal with. That makes us very dependent on our um, infantry for our advance. We're actually going to put this uh, motorized unit here, motorized infantry. And then I'm going to rely heavily on our grenadiers and our uh, pioneer units uh, to keep the initial advance going, as they're much better at dealing with attacking head-on uh, enemy resistance. The armor will kind of be in the back, so that way if we do break through, we can just kind of race through the pocket. Um, and our artillery is kind of also uh, back here. So we'll leave that one infantry unit. It's a pretty good one, but we'll leave that unit out, and otherwise we're all set to fight. If I choose to go down roads, you'll just get split up and have to deal with enemies without unified support. That's a fair point, but, you know, I know in, in the last objective, having that northern force allow us to flank around the enemy actually was the only reason we were able to win, because some of those uh, Soviet objectives in the rear were undefended, and we kind of went up and around their main defensive line. That's That was the saving grace in the last battle, but... Okay, so you can see here there's Soviet forces dug in around Kiev. I'm going to advance Army Group South here, and I think we're going to just kind of take a gradual approach to try and reduce reduce the enemy. We've got some artillery support here. Uh, we've got some armor support, um, and I think the key is just going to be to kind of pound the enemy into submission and slowly crack their defenses. Let's see here. What do we want to attack first? Let's go with this anti-tank. Anti-tank units are the most vulnerable, in my experience, to infantry assaults. So we'll go ahead and bombard them first. Do a little bit of damage, you can see. And then see which unit has the best. They're all at 0 to 3, so we'll do that. It doesn't appear the enemy has any artillery support, so that's uh, a positive. And we're taking a little bit... Okay, there you go. So the enemy surrenders... Um, and we successfully take the position, or well, not take the position, but we successfully destroyed one Soviet unit in our attacks. I'm going to hold off on attacking any of these other units. We'll leave those troops as is. Um, I guess we'll approach this similarly. These guys are all kind of maintaining the cordon of Soviet forces around, you know, here to make sure they don't break out. I don't really know how the AI treats that, you know, is that, 
Is that something that, you know, they're really going to try and break across the river or not? I'm not sure. Um, this recon unit has better spotting. So you can see here, this unit is a, is a very good unit to be able to spot where enemy forces are located. So you can see here, he spotted this enemy anti-air gun and as well as this enemy recon unit. Um, meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and launch an attack against Soviets in this city. And holy shit, was that successful. Now, I already used my movement points up, so I can't move in and take Churisky. But we did just destroy that Soviet force on this side of the river. So maybe some of our other troops along Army Group South will be able to advance north as well. Hey, Tony. Um, okay, let's see here. I'm not sure... Now, this is a little bit of a different scenario. These units were all on the west side of the river, so we could concentrate overwhelming forces against them. This city of Kremchung, or whatever it's pronounced as, actually, we'd have to approach the enemy and only have one unit across the river. It would be really nice to have a bridging unit on this side of the river, so then we could just kind of advance across. Can I purchase that? It's like a non-core unit. How much are bridge units? Not enough unit slots. Apparently, you can use Italian troops in this scenario as well. Um, all right. Let's see. Three, four, five, two, two, two. Okay, so I think we're going to move our Grenadier unit adjacent to the enemy here. Um, we're not going to actually attack, though. We're just going to use our artillery to kind of wear the enemy down. Hopefully, over time. The enemy has an artillery unit there. We've got some fighters as well as... Oh, whoops. As well as some anti-air... I don't know if the Soviets have a lot of air air power in this scenario or not. Um, nice. Ah, lost a little bit heavier than I had hoped. All right, so that may about do it for our operations here on the West Bank. We can we can do this. Oh, yikes. Soviets have some pretty substantial artillery here. Which I don't want to... really deal with attacking. And I don't have any air units to kind of pin them. So we'll just kind of maintain our... I mean, the thought is maybe we could launch an armored blitz of our own here around this flank. Hmm. I'm thinking our better chance is going to be up north. Out here in the east, it could be a little bit different. But again, they give you these three units here. They don't give them to you without a reason, so... I guess we'll start a maneuver around the flank and see if it's worthwhile. Okay, so down up there. I know there's enemy troops here. Actually, in each one of these cities. Probably don't want my artillery so far forward, actually. This is just going to basically secure our flank by hitting this city. Really? No damage there? Okay. Alright, so we took that Soviet city without loss. That's nice in the north. Um, then we'll advance here. We'll use our Stukas against this town. There doesn't appear to be any enemy air. We've used our artillery, so we can't really use any more there. But we'll use our armor. And then our pioneers. So there you go. One enemy town reduced on turn one. Now the problem is my troops can't would really love for them to be able to deploy more quickly. We'll use this bridging unit to allow our troops to get on the other side of the river here. So we've kind of got multiple avenues of advance now rather than just going down one narrow road. Okay. 
move our Stukas up and kind of keep the uh, keep on moving down the line, if you will. I'm gonna keep my. Oh, actually, can we undo that? No, I was gonna say I was gonna try and keep my air units on my Stukas to provide air cover because we saw last turn the Soviets had a lot more air power than I expected, and they were able to overwhelm us. So, I think that about does it. So this is the gold edition of the game. I'm playing the base game, you guys. Uh, just to answer the questions in the chat as far as whether it's worth the extra money. I happen to own all of the DLC for Panzer Corps. I haven't played it all, uh, but the game you're looking at right now is just it's so they it's they add layers on top of the game. The scenario I'm playing right now, the campaign I'm playing right now, are all part of the base Panzer Corps game. If you just get the base game, you get everything that you've seen so far in any of my streams. The add-ons are separate scenarios and separate campaigns that just add depth and playability to it. So there's like a dozen, you know, minor DLCs that add 10 scenarios each, different types of scenarios. There's some major DLCs that add the ability to play a campaign from the Soviet perspective, from the Allied, you know, American or British perspective, and from uh, the Africa core perspective. So the base Wehrmacht game really doesn't delve into Africa at all, and there's actually a DLC specifically for the Africa core. Um, that was the first one. Then they ended up having Allied Corps, which is like the British in the east, you know, in Eastern North Africa, and it also includes the Americas. And then they added a Soviet uh, version, which put you in the role of you know the Soviet Union in World War II. But those are all just scenarios and and more specifically campaign gameplay. Right now, I'm playing the Wehrmacht campaign, which is the base game. Okay. All right, so I think that does it for this first turn. Oh, we can take it there with this guy. Okay, cool. So we took two Soviet cities on the western bank of... Anybody know what is uh, the Dnieper River? Yeah, I like that you hovered over it. It tells you what it is. All right, we'll see what the Soviets have to play with. And air units, lovely. More air units. Holy shit. They just destroyed half. Ah! They have so many air units! Oh, shit. They're going to destroy that Stuka, aren't they? Okay, I mean, I know the Soviets had a lot of planes, but I don't remember the so. Uh, fuck! I don't remember the Soviet Air Force being much of a threat in, uh... In 1942, especially from attack air perspective, they were not wiping out or seriously harming German formations with air. All right. Okay, so we lost one of those Stukas I bought. Good thing it was the rookie Stuka. I really could use some anti-air weapons in my forces. All right. Move him. Armor. I don't know what I want to do with my armor yet. All right, I need to get the artillery closer, though. I don't really want to put that armor in the woods, because they are more vulnerable in the woods, but I do need to move that artillery up. There you go. So that flanking maneuver worked, at least to some extent. 
And now our armor can sweep down and take this... Well, actually, we'll move past the city. And let these guys move into the city. So... I don't want to advance in my trucks. I could advance further, but again, if you advance further, then, you know, if the enemy attacks you when you're in your trucks, you lose a lot. So I'd rather keep a bit of a buffer between us and them. Now, I can move in trucks, you know, across the river that way because it's they're not going to be able to attack me there. Now, there is the risk that when they attack with air units, they'll be more successful, which is certainly probably true. Um, but we'll deal with it. These are kind of the side effects of advancing down a narrow a narrow front. Actually, I'm going to move this guy. I'm going to try and put a bridge across the river down here. So next turn, maybe I can I can move a little bit more quickly south. But at least in the north, another successful turn. Another town has fallen. And we're slowly beginning our march southwards. Uh, the Soviets don't appear to have done anything to retake this uh, trench line. So I'm going to begin the process of reducing this other unit here north. I'm just going to systematically reduce Kiev, in essence. I hope they at least pin him down a little bit, looks like. Okay, three, or four. All right. There you go. So those guys were pinned down. They didn't really shoot back. And as a result, we were able to destroy this unit without taking a single casualty. All right. Um... I'm not going to advance here because that would advance us into a salient where the enemy could attack us from three sides, and that would give them, you know, a bit of a a bit of a bonus there. We'll actually just go ahead and use some reinforcements for this armored unit to replace its casualties. Um, we'll go ahead and move. Interesting. We could. Well, I think what we'll do is this. I'm going to move my recon unit. And this recon unit, you can see here, it has really good line of sight. So we can see there's two enemy artillery positions in the rear of Kiev, which is going to make taking this town hard. But at least we can start reducing the outer defenses. I think they're small. Well, they're 152s, so they could fire in support. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we can attack from three sides against this enemy unit and overwhelm them. So we'll do that as. Oh, come on. Rugged defense. Ugh. That was not what I wanted. That unit may get destroyed next turn. Um, so we'll swap them out. Oh, Jesus. This is a bit more difficult than I had hoped. So I guess we're not going to destroy this unit this turn. Oh, maybe we will. All right, so they surrendered. Huzzah. Advance the infantry up. All right, so we've now reduced three quarters of Kiev's, or not three quarters, but three units in Kiev's defensive line. I really wish I could swap this infantry unit back. But alas, I can't. Um, Let's advance. Ambush! Okay. Soviet... Recon units here across the way. Actually, that was dumb. I don't want to do that. I was going to advance onto this bridge, but if the enemy attacks and they have nowhere to retreat, they'll surrender. So I'm going to leave this bridge open. So if they do get pushed back, they're not forced to surrender. Um, Why are you poor now, Elena? Did you buy this? All right. Okay. Yeah, there's no sense in attacking there. Actually, there's no route to retreat either if those guys are attacked, so probably should move them back. Um, good lord. That's a lot of prestige to lose just to... Place your losses, and then you'll get bombed again next turn anyway. We'll pull these tanks back. Don't bomb us! I'm thinking because they're on that bridge, they were more of a vulnerable target. That's my hope anyway. Yep. Alright, pull back. I don't think we can effectively attack this way. What I may do is shift some of these tanks north... 
to see if we can force a force a crossing up here. I really should buy uh, when I lose a casualty, buy a bridging unit. That I think will go a long way in helping. All right, uh, in the north. There you go. We'll take that town. Th that's not really a substantial or significant town, but it gives you a little bit of a pre prestige boost. Um. Okay. All right, so next turn, I think we're going to concentrate our artillery fire on this southern hex of Kiev, and maybe we can reduce it. We'll see. Um, now that we've taken out three of the defensive units around the town. Uh, but we'll go ahead and jump ahead to the next turn. Awesome, you've got horses? That's pretty cool. Neba verifies. Oh, Soviet attacker. All right, actually. I would love to bombard. Yes. Okay, I'm glad they did that. So the enemy moved one of their artillery units onto the bridge next to Kiev. They moved some reinforcements back into the trench to, to kind of move their defensive line forward. But by doing that, I can now bombard their artillery and effectively reduce its, uh, you know, maybe destroy it even, but certainly uh, reduce its effectiveness in terms of supporting uh, supporting the Soviets against any attack. Let's see. Pull these guys back to refit. Shuttle these guys forward. And I think we'll actually hold off... Let's do one attack here, see how it goes. Mm. Try another. Got it. Okay. We didn't protect our units by using our fighters as air cover, but we just destroyed another Soviet Union, kind of turning Kiev almost into a Verdun situation. We're trying to turn it into a bit of a meat grinder. Um, so we just destroyed the one unit they moved forward. We also damaged the artillery they moved forward in support. Um, so all of that had very useful outcomes. We'll go ahead and reinforce our, uh, our scout car there. Meanwhile, our troops moving across the river continued to engage these enemy recon cars successfully. Mm. They'll be out of ammo this turn, so we should be able to destroy them. Yep. Alright, there you go. So... Move our anti-air up north to guard some of our, of our troops up there. Nibavef has... Hmm. Alright, reinforce these guys. All of our armor is getting reinforcements. Again, we're pinning some enemy armor here in the south. I'm hoping the enemy doesn't have anything in the way of a T-34, so we could be somewhat in trouble. I don't think the enemy has bridging equipment where they can cross the river, and that so I, I'm kind of thinking maybe we can relax some of our defenses up there. Um, all right, going north. Got some aircraft up here, didn't they? No. All right. Moving our Stuka south. This is one of those scenarios, by the way, where it would be very useful to have um, some self-propelled artillery guns. 
All right, folks, that's going to do it for this first part of the invasion or attack on Kiev during the Russian invasion. This is part 15 or so of my uh, Panzer Corps Let's Play series, uh, which was from a live stream a while back. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here in about 30 minutes. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This is the Historical Gamer signing out.